The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... but a word. Quite meaningless, really. Altogether without substance. But to those who have felt its icy touch, it has the same mind-shattering meaning it had for Jane Prentice when Iris Patterson told her... You'll just have to pretend you know nothing about all this. Act like a bride. Like a bride? No, I can't. It's up to you. You're really in no danger at this point. You won't be till you sign the insurance application. I won't sign it. You'll have to. So you don't arouse his suspicions. Oh, and one thing more. Yes? Whatever you do, don't cross him. Do as he says, precisely as he says. Always. Or we may not be able to save you. mystery drama, Journey into Terror, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Roy Sinnes and Lynn Loring. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. never know what the morrow may bring, do we? Indeed, what unexpected turn of fate may change our lives within the next hour? The truth is, we may well see but ignore telltale signs which warn us of danger ahead, and when the blow falls, wonder how in the world we could have failed to take heed. Jane Stoddard took no notice of the telltale signs, and as a result faced death in a horrible form. I certainly admire the way you're taking a sudden change in our honeymoon plans, Jane. You're a real sport. Nonsense, Tom. <laughs> Whether thou goest, I will go. The Detroit instead of the Bahamas on your honeymoon? It's not your fault your wealthy client lives here instead of Nassau. <laughs> patient, Jane. Patient, not client. A very handsome and talented one. Do you have client... Uh, patients all over the country? All over the world. You mean... We're going to be traveling constantly? Oh, no. My practice is mainly in New York, but now and again I'm called into consultation. Well, have fun, sweetheart. You'll see. And now I'd better get a move on, or my patient will find himself another doctor. Will you be long? No, a few hours. Why don't you get out of this hotel and do some shopping? <sighs> Maybe. But right now I think I'll just stretch out and rest a bit. Good. And you'll be in great shape for the theater tonight and some dancing later. See you in a few hours, sweetheart. Uh, darling. Bye now. Bye, dearest. Oh, dear. To think I could be sunning myself on Paradise Beach right this minute. Mm, nice, hard bed. Oh, it feels good to stretch out. Turn on the radio. Get some music. Oh, that's nice. We interrupt for a special bulletin. The body of a woman, a newly married bride, was found less than an hour ago in her palatial Shaker Heights home. According to the police, she had been tortured, then strangled with one of her own stockings. The coroner has established the time of death as having occurred about 48 hours ago. <sighs> Fine honeymoon. I'm in a hotel room listening to the latest murder report. Yes? M Mrs. Stoddard. Mrs. Thomas Stoddard? Yes? I'm calling from the lobby, Mrs. Stoddard. You don't know me, but my name is Iris Patterson. 
know you're alone at the moment. I saw your husband leave the hotel just a few minutes ago. What is it you want? I want to come up and talk with you. About what? It's an urgent matter, Mrs. Stoddard. In fact, and please don't be upset now. It's a matter of life and death. Life and death? Whose? Yours, I'm afraid. Come in, Miss Patterson. Yes, but Iris will do. My credentials. New York City Police. Special Branch Detective Division. You're a detective? Yes. Well, what in the world do you want with me? Mrs. Stoddard, what I'm about to tell you is going to shock you. But please keep in mind that at the moment, at least, you're in no danger. Danger? At the moment? What are you talking about? Let me explain. About an hour ago, the body of a young woman, a bride was found in her home in Shaker Heights. I just heard the bulletin on the radio. Did you? What has that murder got to do with me? She was murdered by your husband. Uh, Here, please, here, let me... uh, No. No, I'm all right. I I thought for a moment you were going to fail. So did I, frankly, but... I'm all right. Surely you've made some sort of mistake. I'm afraid not. But you must have... Tom, my husband can't possibly be a murderer. No matter what you say, I can't and I won't believe it. I don't blame you for feeling as you do, of course, but perhaps you'll believe me if... Well, if I tell you a few things about yourself that will surprise you. Such as what? Your first meeting with Tom Stoddard was accidental, or rather appeared accidental. What? Why, yes. I mean, it was. It it was in New York City. It was raining. We both hailed the same cab at the same time. And at his suggestion, you shared it. Yes. It happened uh, roughly ten days, two weeks ago. Yes. But, but how do you know? It's his M.O., his modus operandi, the way he operates. Now, I'm quite sure, for example, that you have no family to speak of, no mother, father, they're dead, no brothers and sisters. That's true. And few close friends. You lived alone. Uh, No roommates. You're absolutely right, but I see... His victims are always young women who are alone in the world. You see, this helps to make them easy prey. I mean, they're lonely, they yearn for companionship and are perfect setups for a whirlwind courtship. He swept you off your feet, of course. Oh, he did. Flowers, candy, dinner dates, theater. It was... I was ecstatic, but... No. No, you can't be right. You have made a mistake. A terrible mistake. Mrs. Stoddard... Jane... If I may. Yes. We have made no mistake. For example, what about the insurance policy? What insurance policy? Hasn't he mentioned insurance to you? No. He will. Hasn't gotten around to it yet, that's all, but sooner or later, probably sooner, he's going to want you to take out an insurance policy for a large sum, naming him beneficiary. It's unbelievable, incredible. It is true, nevertheless. If it is, if Tom is a murderer, if he did kill that bride in Shaker Heights... And a few others. Then why don't you simply arrest him? Because we don't have enough evidence. He's extremely clever. And so far, we've been totally unable to nail him with the goods. That, Jane, is where you come in. What do you mean? We want you to help us nail him with the goods. Me? You could be. The chances you are his next victim. Uh, now, if you consent to work with us, follow our instructions, we can set a trap for him. With me as the bait? Yes. No. I-, I couldn't do that. I haven't the nerve for anything like that. I think you have. And just remember... You're in no danger at the moment. You won't be until you sign your name to an insurance policy. But, look, 
Wait a minute. There's one thing I don't understand. What? Tom wasn't married to that young bride in Shaker Heights, was he? No. Well? He marries his brides for money. He kills others for kids. <gasps> Oh, good Lord. Now, if you help us just work along with us, follow our instructions, you will have a better chance of saving yourself than if you don't. What... What do you want me to do? For the time being, nothing. Except to... Well, just act like a bride. In other words, do nothing to arouse his suspicions. I can't do it. I just can't. It's up to you, Jane. Of course. <laughs> if you feel you can't, well, you can't. But as I said, you're in no real danger now, and you won't be until he brings up that little matter of insurance. <gasps> Jane, you can do it. You must. I... All right. Good girl. Now, one thing more. Yes? He doesn't remain long in one place. He kills and runs, you might say. Uh, he'll probably suggest leaving Detroit and going somewhere else. If he does, and we're positive he will, go along with him. Don't cross him. Don't ever cross him. One false move could mean sudden death, Jane. Sudden and agonizing death. <laughs> uh, I thought the third act was a riot, didn't you, Jack? Yes. Yes, it was, Tom. I noticed you didn't laugh much, though. Of course I did. It seemed to me the only times you laughed were when you caught me watching you. Tell you the truth, honey, you've been kind of depressed all evening and trying awfully hard to act as if you weren't. Well, to be honest, Tom, I'm, I'm just not feeling well. Well, maybe you are yearning for NASA in the Bahamas, wishing you were there instead of here. I, I'm with you, Tom, and that's all that matters. Sure. Couldn't be sure. And anyhow, I, I like Detroit. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about that. Why? Well, we're leaving for Los Angeles in the morning. Oh? Well, what do you mean, oh? Just, oh. <laughs> Tom, why are we going to Los Angeles? Another patient? No, I had a call from Greg Benson, a colleague of a friend of mine. He's managing the National Conference for Psychiatrists in Los Angeles. And their head speaker was taken ill, and he can't appear tomorrow evening, and Greg asked if I'd fill in. Oh, well, that's fine, just fine. You're not upset. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Whither thou goest, there go I. Mm -hmm. And what say we had for bed? Bed? <laughs> bed. You know, that thing you lie on, close your eyes and go to sleep? I, I'm not really sleepy. If, if I go to bed now, I'll just toss and turn all night long. Okay, then. I suppose we... Uh sit and talk about our future together. What's to talk about? Uh, re redecorating our new apartment. You said you wanted to. How much money you'll need for the household expenses. Oh, and uh, insurance. Insurance? Naturally, I'm going to make you beneficiary of all my life policies. In fact, that's already in the works. Ed Kearns, my agent, is handling it. And he suggested, and I agree, that we ought to take her, uh, you know, a policy in your name, making me beneficiary. Hundred thousand dollars, I... Seems a, a lot of money. Well, I suppose it is. <laughs> but let's say you're worth it. Honey, <laughs> I mean, what is it? What? You went white as a ghost. Say, so you are off your feed. Come on over here. Let me put my arms around you and hold you. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Yes. Happy? Yes. You better be. Because you're in real trouble if you're not. Trouble? I'm sure. Happy or not, you're stuck with me. Till death do us part. <laughs> It 
appear that Tom Stoddard is not only a murderer, but a murderer with a sardonic sense of humor. The full import of those words from the marriage ceremony, the import of Tom's use of them, is by no means lost on Jane. And for the first time in her young life, terror becomes more than a word. It becomes an actuality. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Young and pretty Jane Stoddard has taken the first steps on a journey of terror as she realizes she has married a murderer, a man who tortures and strangles brides for money and for thrills. Detective Iris Patterson of the New York Police Department has warned Jane that Tom Stoddard kills and runs. And now, as Jane finds herself with him in a Los Angeles hotel suite... So, once again, my darling, I'm off. A fine honeymoon I'm giving you. Where's the conference being held, Tom? Belmonte Hotel. Why? I, I just wondered. You didn't say, and if I wanted to get hold of you for any reason. Don't. Don't? Don't even want to get a hold of me. I'm going to be up to my ears and work. Oh. Well, all right. I'll see you later. Monty Hotel. I wonder if you would tell me, please, in what room the National Conference of Psychiatrists is being held. What? Would you repeat that? There is no conference of psychiatrists being held at the Belmonte? Yes. Thank you. That's what I thought you said. Oh, Jane, girl. Police or no police. You're getting out of this hotel and out of Tom Stoddard's life right now. Start... Pa yes? Jane. Iris. Detective Iris Patterson? Yes? Jane, I'd like you to get a taxi and meet me at the Santa Monica Pier. Santa Monica Pier? We think Stoddard may be getting suspicious. I've got to talk to you. And I'd like to do it where there's no chance of his discovering us. So if you could meet me... Iris, I'm sorry, but I'm not meeting you at Santa Monica Pier or anywhere else. That means you've changed your mind. I, I was packing when you phoned. I'm getting out of here. I'm going where? Back to New York. Don't do that, Jane. Why not? Because he'll follow you. Wherever you go, from here on, he's going to follow you because... Look, listen, Jane... There's a lot you don't understand, and I ought to explain. You can't run away from Stoddard. If you try, you'll be sealing your own death warrant. Oh, Jane, please, for your own safety, meet me at Santa Monica Pier. If you still want out after that, okay. All right. I'll meet you. When? Half an hour. I'll be watching for you. Keep the change, driver. Uh, Jane! Jane, over here! Here, Jane! Hello, Iris. Well, we're safe enough here, I think. Uh, would you like something to drink to eat? Iris, I've been followed. Someone has been shadowing me since I left the hotel. Of course. That man in the car over there... What do you mean, of course? You're under strict guard. The man in that car is a Los Angeles detective. Oh, I, I'd forgotten I was being held under surveillance. Oh, well, you feel safer. Much. You're half an hour late, though. What happened? Iris, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Well, you, you won't believe this. I, I couldn't find the pantyhose that go with this dress. I, I hunted high and low, and I... What, what's that, eh? Nothing. And um, no, nothing, uh... Iris, there is something. The second I mentioned pantyhose, you got a funny look on your face. Okay... I wanted to keep it from you. No sense alarming you unnecessarily. Jane, there's been another murder. Here in L.A. A bride strangled with a pair of 
pantyhose after being tortured. No. Iris, that does it. I'm getting as far from Tom Stoddard as I can. Jane, another girl who married Tom Stoddard became afraid of him, left him, and tried to hide from him, and, well, it took him two years to find her and kill her. But he found her and he killed her. No! The simple truth is your safety lies in our arresting Stoddard with enough evidence to put him behind bars for life. Now tell me, Jane, has he mentioned that uh, insurance policy yet? Yes. Last night in Detroit, he wants to take out a $100,000 policy on my life with him as beneficiary. You didn't sign anything, an application for the insurance? No. Well, then you have nothing to worry about until he asks you to sign. You're relatively safe. Relatively. <laughs> Don't worry. Safe enough. Iris, what did you want to talk about? Well, the next step is getting started with the goods. <coughs> By this time tomorrow, unless we miss our guess, you'll be in Miami, Florida. What? Where... Now, look, I, I, I'm going to lay this on the line, Jane, and I want you to understand clearly what you're in for, where we want to catch Stoddard in the act. The act of murder. Of murdering you. To be precise, the act of attempting to murder you. He won't succeed, of course, because you'll be surrounded by police. Of course. I mean it. Now, the reason we feel sure he'll be heading for Miami, probably tomorrow, is because that's where the original murder took place. The original murder? Yes, here's the story. You see, nearly five years ago, Stoddard fell in love with a gorgeous... <laughs> well, sex pot, madly in love. They met and they married in Detroit, came here to L.A. on their honeymoon and... Then went on to a beach cottage a few miles north of Miami Beach. Why did he murder her? All right, I'm coming to that. Stoddard had to be away for 24 hours or so on business, and he left his bride in the cottage. But then he changed his plans, you see, unexpectedly, and came back to find her with another man. He killed the man first. Oh. Then he spent hours torturing his bride before he killed oh. her. I don't get this. If he killed this woman in Miami, and you know he did, how come he's still free? How come he's not in prison? He was for more than three years. He got off with a reduced sentence on, on a plea of temporary insanity. I see. Only as we see it and have every reason to believe, he's still insane. You really mean it when you say if I try to go somewhere he can't find me, he'd still he'd find me? He'd still hound you until he does find you, yes. Then I... I had no choice, have I? I don't think so. <sighs> All right, Iris. I'll go along. What else can I do? Honey, I'm back. Coming. I was just fixing my hair. Oh, now you can fix me up with a welcome home kiss. Mm. Mm. Well, what did you do with yourself while I was at the conference today? Oh, this and that. I went for a walk, some shopping, sat by the pool. You didn't swim? Too chilly. Tom, yeah. how did things go at the conference? Oh, fine. Just fine. <sighs> Don't you believe me? Of course. Well, what a funny look. Funny look? No funny look. Oh, yes, you look... Uh, well, I don't know. Funny. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, to be plain about it, honey, I... I kind of get the feeling you don't trust me or something. Tom, you'd be perfectly ridiculous. No, I don't think so, Jane. Whether you're hiding something from me or you're very upset about something, now, which is it? Come on, what is it? Nothing. Honestly, Tom, nothing. Jane, there is something. Now, what is it? Let's have it. Tom, really? Jane, I'm no fool. I know when something's wrong, and something is wrong. Now, what is it? I, I, you what? I did want to get in touch with you today. 
I felt just so awfully lonely, Tom, and I... I phoned you at the Belmonte Hotel. Well, what'd you phone me there for? To get in touch with you. What else? Well, I wasn't there. What would I have been doing there? You said you were going to the National Conference of Psychiatrists, didn't you? I did. And you said it was being held at the Belmonte, didn't you? No, I didn't. Now, how could I when it was being held at the Beverly Towers? You said the Belmonte. I said the Beverly Towers. Did you try there? Of course not. No, of course not. Well, why should you if you misunderstood what I said this morning? You know what? I, th I think you're fed up with this whole so-called honeymoon, which so far hasn't been any kind of a honeymoon at all. No, I... Yes, I think so. And now I've got another surprise for you, and this time a pleasant one. You want to hear it? Of course. Well, for the next week, or well, the next three or four days, anyhow, I'm declaring a holiday. A patient of mine owns one of the prettiest beach houses you've ever seen, and he's offered it to me any time I want it. While well, he isn't there, of course. And he isn't. And that's where I'm taking you tomorrow, for the duration of our honeymoon. Where... Where is it? It's just north of Miami Beach. And this time tomorrow, you're going to be there. Oh, we haven't been here even a full day. And I've never seen Los Angeles before. We'll come back another time. But we're here now. Oh, Tom, there's so many things I want to do. Is it the movie studios, Disneyland? We, we could run down to Capistrano. Jane, please. I don't want to argue about this. I mean... Frankly, I don't understand your attitude. Here, finally, I can take you to a really beautiful honeymoon spot, and you don't want to go. I don't get it. It's just that... Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll go. Of course we will. Unless... You haven't some other reason for not wanting to go, have you? Other reason? Other than wanting to stay in Los Angeles. I know. What other reason could I have? That's what I asked you. There's nothing wrong, is there? No, no, Tom, of course not. You sure? Uh, Tom, you're hurting my arm. Well, I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't hurt you for the world. <laughs> Kill you, maybe, but not hurt you. Kill me? Oscar Wilde. I think said, each man kills the thing he loves. If that's so, considering how much I love you, sweetheart, you haven't long to live. So Jane Stoddard moves along step by step on her journey into terror. And obviously the end of that journey will be the beach house just outside Miami Beach, Florida. Trapped, caught, and helpless... In a web of circumstances beyond her control, Jane has no choice but to continue the journey to certain death. I'll return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. How strange, how inexplicable are the workings of fate. How curious, too, that the fearful things that happen to others we never consider may happen to us. Could we, any of us, ever find ourselves married to a murderer as Jane finds herself married to Tom Stoddard? Seems hardly likely. Might we one day realize we are headed for sudden death and powerless to prevent the inevitable? Scarcely possible. Well... Jane once thought so, too, if she thought about it at all. But now, with a murderous husband at her side, she flies toward Miami Beach, Florida, and death. Jane? Uh, Sweetheart, what's up? What is it? What, Tom? I, I, I don't... You seem so tense. No. No, nervous, maybe. Flying always scares me a little. Well, soon landing in Miami, so relax. I'll try. Oh, uh, Kearns, my insurance man, sent me that application in L.A. I got it right here. Application? You know, the insurance policy I'm taking out on your life. Now, here's a pen. You can sign it now. Now, shoot it back to Kearns from Miami Beach. Uh, well, sign it, honey. Yes, of course. Good. That takes care of that. Oh, might have 
if I settle back and catch 40 winks? Of course not. I I'm going up to the ladies' room. Okay. Iris. Jake. He mustn't see you talking to me. He's taking a nap. I saw you come on board. Iris, I just signed for that insurance policy. A hundred thousand dollars in naming him as beneficiary. Did you have to? No choice. That's too bad. I hoped he'd hold off on that till I got things squared away with the Miami police. I signed my own death warrant, you say? No, no, no. It's not as bad as that. Now, the second we land, you'll be under close surveillance, and so will he. Follow instructions, and you won't have a thing to worry about. Well, I wish I could be as sure of that as you seem to you be. You can be. Just trust me. Now, go back to your seat before he wakes up. The last thing we want is for him to see us together. Jane, I can hardly bear to sit next to him. Hang on to your nerve, Jane. We're close to the end now. I just hope it's not the end for me. Well, what did I tell you? Hmm? Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, only... Only it, it does seem rather isolated, don't mm, it? It is. That's one of the things that make it perfect for a honeymoon. That and the beach and the water out there. What more could a bride want? Except, of course, her husband. Uh, Tom, please. Jane, what? I'm just not in the mood at the moment, that's all. Well, I was feeling guilty about going off in the boat to fish for a few hours. But since you obviously don't love me anymore... Of course I love you. Of course you do. And I can't blame you for being a bit out of sorts, all this traveling. I've hardly given you a chance to settle down. Well, okay. I'm off to do some fishing. You can be alone for a few hours, give you a chance to relax. Let's have a kiss for good luck. Okay, be back for dinner. Fish dinner, I hope. <laughs> Kevin, you're here. Tom's gone fishing. Yes, we know. We watched him leave in the boat half an hour ago. We? Myself and two detectives assigned to the case. Now, look, Jane. I've got something to tell you you're not going to like. Just try to keep calm, will you? Yes. All right, here it is. We're quite sure, Detectives Allen and Varney and I, that Stoddard will attempt to kill you tonight. Why tonight? It's the anniversary of the night he murdered his first wife and her lover oh, in this cottage. No. Don't look so frightened, Jane. In a way, you ought to feel relieved. After tonight, it'll all be over. For me, maybe. Not a chance. I said we're sure he'll attempt to murder you. But we're also sure he'll fail. How can you be so sure? Oh, well, we just are. You're evading me, Iris. What makes you sure? I I didn't want to make things harder for you, Jane, but, well, there's the, the torture. Torture? Yes. Are, are you telling me you're going to let him torture me before you move in? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. What I'm saying is that we've got to let him make the first move. We've got to have the evidence to convict him. And that brings me to the... To the next step. Yes. Now, we're going to have to bug this cottage. Set up a tape recorder with concealed microphones in each room. Why? Because once he has you, that is, once he thinks he has you where he wants no, you... No, I can't go through Jane, this. I... Jane, you can. Now, please. Please trust me. As I say, once he thinks he's got you where he wants you, he'll do a lot of talking. He'll get pleasure out of telling you who he really is and how he tricked you into marrying him and, and what he intends to do before he murders you. Now, Detectives Allen and Barney and myself will be here in the house recording every word. And Jane, dear, I give you my solemn word. Once we have the evidence, we'll move in on him so fast, he won't have a chance to lay a finger on you. I hope you're right. Now, one more thing before I go. Here's a sleeping powder. You always have cocktails before dinner. 
I slipped this powder into his cocktail tonight. Put him to sleep? What on earth for? So we can bug the place. He'll only sleep for an hour or so. It's a light dose. <sighs> but he's out fishing. Can't you do what you have to do now? No, no, it's too risky. Everything has to be concealed carefully. And we can't chance him coming back unexpectedly. <laughs> Is a sailor home from the sea without a single fish to show for it. Oh, Tom, no luck? Oh, lots of it. All bad. <laughs> but you should have seen the one that got away. <laughs> well, at least I can drown my sorrow in a couple of dry martinis. You? Yes, I- I'll mix them. No, I'll do it. You relax now. I've been doing it all afternoon. I, I may not be much of a cook, as I'm afraid you're going to discover at dinner. But I do know how to mix a dry martini. Well, dinner is only a dinner, but a good dry martini is a drink. Whatever that means. Well, it must mean something. I'll think about it. Well, what do we do tonight after dinner? Get a drive to Miami Beach? Why don't we just stay here? Oh, that's okay with you. Perfectly. It's going to be a full moon. We can sit on the beach and watch it come up over the horizon. A perfect moon for a perfect honeymoon. Here. Ah, thank you. Looks good. Mmm, tastes good, too. You make a fine dry martini. Thank you, sir. Let's have these out on the porch so we can watch the sunset, huh? Good idea. Oh, this deck chair feels good. I'm more worn out from fishing than I thought. You've had a lot of air and sun. Mmm, that sun was hot and bright. Even with sunglasses, the glare was hard in my eyes. You didn't put anything in this martini, did you? No. I feel sleepy. So suddenly. As you said, the glare of the sun on the water. Mm. Worse than I thought. Oh, boy. I just can't keep my eyes open. Can't stay awake. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't mind me. Close your eyes. Rest them. Mm, yes. I never felt so sleep. <gasps> what was that? Uh, nothing. The glass slipped from your fingers. Don't worry about it. I'll clean it up. You sleep. Mm. Tom? Mm. Tom? Good. <gasps> Iris! Iris, dear! He's asleep. That's fine, Jane. That's just fine. You handled everything exactly as I wanted you to. All right, now what? Let's go in so I can decide where to place the mics and the tape recorder. You didn't bring them with you. What? The microphones and all that. No. Uh, Those detectives will bring it. No. Well, if you haven't got it and they're not bringing it... Glass doors, why are you locking them? They have to be. Whatever for? Because. That's the way it was. These glass doors were locked when I came back that night. What? Came back unexpectedly and found Jim with her. Iris, what what are you saying? I told you. That day on Santa Monica Pier, I was supposed to be away for a day or so, but then changed my mind and came back that night and found them together. In bed, together. I killed him. Uh, But I tortured her. I put her through the hell I would go through later, thanks to her. You? Yes. And now you. Uh, You'll go through the tortures of the damned. uh, Like the bride in Detroit, in Los Angeles, and finally here. You you tricked me from the first. I tricked you. (laughs) Why, you little naive fool. It was no trick at all. My only problem was that husband of yours asleep out there. Trying, always trying to be one jump ahead of me. And sooner or later, he'd have succeeded. Tom. Tom was after you. Has been. I escaped from the asylum. No. You don't know who your husband is? (laughs) Well, of course you wouldn't. You hardly know him at all. He's not just a psychiatrist, my dear. He's a psychiatrist with the New York Police Department. (laughs) Oh, poor fellow. I escaped on the very day he married you. 
the police needed him. They needed him badly to figure out where I'd go, what I'd do. And he did figure it out. Only he was always just one step behind me, not one step ahead. But, oh, this makes no sense. The day I met you on the Santa Monica Pier, I was followed. I was. The man in the car following me, you said he was a detective working with you. With your husband, silly. No. Not me. Yes, you were being guarded, tailed every way you went. But not by me, by your husband. Oh, why didn't they catch you? You and I sat there on the pier. That man in the car couldn't do a thing without endangering your life because I had this. <gasps> And could have oh. plunged it into you the minute he made a oh, move. A knife. A knife. Long enough to reach your heart. Oh. Sharp enough to do to you what I did to her. No. Before I strangled her. Oh. Slowly strangled her. No. Oh, please. Stand still. Oh, don't back away. Oh. Yeah. That's all right. Move. Move oh. back. Just keep moving back oh. into that corner where I can get at you with this knife. Where I can start working on you. Uh -uh. A little cut here, a nick there, a stab uh -uh. in just the right place. Making it last. Uh -uh. The torture. Making it last as long as... Don't move! Iris, don't move! Just don't move. Now drop the knife. Oh, Tom, I put a sleeping powder in your drink. A drink I threw away when I said I'd join you on the porch. Yes, Iris. I have been one step behind you. But this time, thank God, I've been one step ahead of you. I seem to remember saying that our lives are fraught with the unexpected. Also seems to me that, wrong as I can be at times, this time I was right. Glad I was. Jane Stoddard was only a pawn in the game the fates play. But thank heaven, she remains a living pawn. I'll return in a moment. Iris is once again safe behind institutional walls. You'll be happy to know as for Jane and Tom Stoddard, they're on a second honeymoon. Or maybe I ought to say the first. The other one doesn't count. Our cast included Lynn Loring, Roy Thinnes, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. With the police, I swear it. And why all the questions, oh, Tom? Why all the nosing around? Oh, you're hurting me. Take please. it easy. I oh. don't want no trouble in oh, here. Gee, something. She's got to be. Best told her I do business in your place, and now she shows up here the next morning. Don't that sound fishy to you? Oh, well, it's funny. Oh, come it's on, funny. baby. Jim. Jimmy, don't. I, I was just the statue. Oh, I just wanted the statue. The what? I just choose this thing. What's the statue got to do with... Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You're, You're right, Wormer. She's not a cop. Yeah, she's been acting like a cop, but that's not what she is. Please, please. Oh, please let me go. I, I didn't mean any harm. Please oh, let me no, go. no, no. Please. Sugar, you're not a cop at all. What you are is a nun. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated... Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Chicago.